Hey guys and welcome along to This Week in Photography in which I search the internet for cool photography and drone related stories and provide analysis sweetened with some industrial grade sarcasm and the occasional knowing wink. And in this week's show, DJI launched their standalone FPV camera system. The dueling drones over the Ukraine claims that the Dallas air show disaster was caused by a drone, a backpack for tripods launches, and a beach bum bonanza on Bondi Beach. DJI haven't hidden their desire to dominate every part of the consumer drone market with a stable of drones and aftermarket accessories covering every possible scenario. However, when it comes to FPV drones, DJI used to be something of a non-entity with the vast majority of drone flyers preferring to roll their own drones. It wasn't until DJI launched their digital FPV system that they made any inroads into the FPV scene at all. And their latest assault on the FPV scene comes in the shape of the O3 Air FPV camera system. Designed to pair with the FPV goggles version 2, the O3 system can transmit video digitally from over 10 kilometers away in 1080p and at 100 frames per second. And if that one over 1.7 inch 48 megapixel CMOS sensor, the 155 degree field of view, the fixed f.28 aperture and 4k 60 fps video resolution sounds familiar then you won't be surprised to learn that it's the same camera that dji fitted in the avata so basically you can now take that avata camera strap it to any fpv drone you like and enjoy dji's excellent o3 plus transmission system paired with your ride of choice if you already have an FPV drone, then you might be tempted by the 349 Australian dollar price tag. Though do bear in mind, you'll also need either the Goggles 2 or the FPV Goggles V2. I'm not a betting man, but would anyone really be surprised if it turned out that DJI didn't have an FPV airframe and motor system sitting on those busy, busy development benches in Shenzhen? One globally popular market sector that DJI have had unexpected success in is in armed warfare. As you may have seen, the Ukrainian army have been putting humble DJI drones to good use by using them to drop small targeted explosives on unsuspecting Russian conscripts sheltering in foxholes. This is a surprisingly effective tactic, not just in terms of cheaply inflicting casualties on the invading Russian army, but also as a first-rate propaganda tool. Video shot on the drones in high quality 4K video thanks to the low light capabilities of the Mavic's excellent camera system has lit up social media. It's footage that probably won't find its way into DJI's next drone launch video, but it's certainly keeping the keyboard warriors of Reddit engaged. It's just a shame they can't fly one through Putin's Kremlin window and drop an IED on the one person that really deserves a violent and painful death. Now, a new video shot in the combat zone on the eastern borders of Ukraine has come to light. It shows two conscripted Mavic drones engaging in an aerial duel. In a video released on Twitter, a Russian drone, handily marked with a large Z, was shown hovering close by to a Ukrainian drone. The fact that the drone is marked with a Z has led some pundits to suggest that the video is staged. And while fakery is always a possibility, I reckon the Ukrainians have probably got better things to do with their time than fanny about making fake drone videos. And also, they've got a seemingly never-ending supply of the real stuff, so why would they bother? 
In the footage in question, the drones engage in a game of aerial chicken and, like a microcosm of the wider conflict, the Russian drone gets its ass kicked and plummets from the sky. Given how easily the Russian drone made contact with the Ukrainian drone, can only assume that both of them had DJI's obstacle avoidance enabled. If the Ukrainians want to avoid this kind of thing in the future, then they really need to get hold of some Skydio drones. Meanwhile, investigators have been analysing footage of the airshow B-17 crash in Dallas last month. Footage of the tragedy shot by a bystander on a smartphone appears to show a drone-sized object in the path of the P-63 Cobra moments before its engine fails and it collides with the B-17 bomber. Unfortunately, the smartphone that was used to film the doomed aircraft certainly isn't one of the current generation, and it's pretty hard to make out much on the potato-grade footage. That said, the smear of dark pixels alleged to be the drone do look vaguely drone-sized and do appear to be moving in a way that a drone would. Many airports now have drone detection systems in place in order to detect illegal drone flight movements through flight corridors. Newspaper reports show that they were certainly testing these detection systems at the main Dallas-Fort Worth airport six years ago, but whether they were installed and whether the smaller Dallas Executive Airport where the tragedy happened followed suit is unclear. It should also be pointed out that in the vast majority of cases in which a drone is alleged to have been flown in proximity to an aircraft, it has actually turned out to be something like a plastic bag. So it would be unwise to pin this awful event on the actions of some sociopath with a Mavic until we have all the facts. In any case, I suspect events like those in Dallas, whether they eventually transpire to be drone related or not, will not hurt sales of drone detection systems such as DJI's Airscope. Christmas is fast approaching and with it the headache of gift giving. If you haven't given it already and just bought a pile of gift cards, there are some cool options out there, particularly for us photographers. The Camdicam Triponcho is not, despite how it sounds, an advanced sexual technique for experimental swingers, but in fact a rather nifty pocket system for tripods. The Triponcho is a canvas jacket for your tripod, which wraps around the tripod legs, creating a flexible pocket system. You can stash lenses, smartphones, or your packed lunch in the pockets, to save yourself having to fertile about in your backpack every two minutes. Now, admittedly, this particular bit of photography gear would be no use to me because my tripod's rarely in one place for longer than about a minute. But I imagine it would be great for other photographic niches such as astro or time-lapse or any kind of photography in which you're sat in one location for extended periods of time. The tri ponchos are on sale now and retail for 70 US or 105 Australian dollars and can be purchased from the Etsumi website which I will link to down below. And finally, American photographer Spencer Tunnick has become well known worldwide for his mass participation art installations. And now he's put in his profile to great use for a great cause. Spencer's photographs feature large numbers of people in the nude, in close proximity to each other, in unlikely locations such as Grand Central Station's main terminus. He never has a problem getting volunteers to pose for his large-scale installations. And while this might be because some people love stripping off in the name of art, I'm not judging, it might also be because all the participants receive a limited edition print as a reward. Recently, Spencer teamed up with the Strip Off for Cancer charity to fundraise for cancer research. He invited volunteers along to Bondi Beach for a sunrise shoot and a photograph for one of his large-scale art installations. 
In the end, about 2,500 people rocked up and stripped off to pose for the photograph, and a grand old time was had by all. Tunick felt that a skin cancer charity was the perfect partnership for his work. As he put it, I used the amazing array of body types and skin tones to create my work, so it feels perfectly appropriate to take part in this effort, in that my medium is the nude human form. So good on everyone that got their bums out on Bondi in the name of Cancer Research. And if you'd like to donate, I'll put a link down in the section below. And that'll do us for this week, guys. Do you like the look of that DJI FPV camera system? Did you get your kit off on Bondi for Spencer Tunick's photograph? Let me know down in the comments section below. If you liked the video, please do remember to give it a like to help with my visibility here on YouTube and subscribe to hear more of my world-worn wisdom and occasional Anglo-Saxon expletives. Till the next time, guys. Ta-ta.